Perhaps somewhere in the course of your mathematics education, you have seen the binomial expansion. Even if you haven't, don't worry. I'm going to give you a quick crash course on the binomial expansion. On the left hand side, we have 1 plus z raised to the sixth power. On the right hand side, we have seven terms. Notice the progression from z to z squared to z cubed all the way up to z to the sixth. Take a look at the coefficients underlined in blue. Where do those come from? It turns out you could FOIL the expression 1 plus z multiple times, and those are the coefficients you'd get when you're done simplifying. A much quicker shortcut is to use Pascal's triangle. Notice the ones along the sides of the triangle. Every term in the middle is the sum of the two numbers above it. So for example, 10 is equal to 4 plus 6, as seen circled in red. The same rule applies to every other number inside the triangle. Notice the base of this triangle. These are the same coefficients we just saw underlined in blue. The pattern continues indefinitely, but I've stopped it at this row for our particular example. Starting with zero at the top, each row of the triangle can be numbered. In our case, we are working with the sixth row. In other notation, n equals six. Why is that important? Pause the video if you need to in order to observe the pattern on this screen. For each term, we multiply by another number and divide by a factorial. By the time we get halfway through, numbers in the numerator cancel with those in the denominator. Our final answers, underlined in blue, are the exact same coefficients we obtained from Pascal's triangle. So it is that this factorial representation is another way to express the coefficients of a binomial expansion. I have repeated that equivalent factorial representation here in the second line. I have replaced the 6 by n for a generic number. So what happens if we substitute x over n for z? What does the binomial expansion of that look like? The binomial expansion for 1 plus x over n, quantity to the nth power, looks like this. In the second line, I foiled out the terms and canceled 1n in the denominator. In the third line, I split up each numerator into separate terms, which further simplifies things. Pause the video if you care to comb through the algebraic details. I would encourage you to do this for the benefit of your understanding. Now we are going to let n go to infinity. In red, look how all those terms go to zero when we divide by infinity. That simplifies the expression significantly. For n going to infinity, the sigma notation boxed in blue is a valid representation of the infinite series. I stopped at n equals 4 in this example, but the same pattern continues for all the terms after that. Can you convince yourself that this is in fact true? Let's take the infinite series we just derived from the binomial expansion and set x equal to 1. That leaves us with an infinite series as seen here. It is the sum of 1 over n factorial, where n is every positive integer. But wait a minute. We have seen in previous lessons that the number e is equal to the same limit as n goes to infinity. So it is that this infinite series converges to e. Let's crunch some numbers and see how good this approach is at calculating e. Here I have made a spreadsheet with columns for n, n factorial, and 1 over n factorial. The last column is the summation. Notice that after 18 terms we have converged to 14 digits past the decimal. That's not bad. In fact, this already seems like a better way to compute e than the other methods we've seen. One was a limit related to compound interest, and another was a limit related to the slope of an exponential function. Both of those were discussed previously. In an effort to speed up the rate of convergence, let us now try x equal to 1 half. This is the same as plugging 0 0.5 into the infinite series for e to the x. There is one caveat. We are going to have to square this number to make it equal to e. Here is the spreadsheet of those numbers. We may have experienced a bit of round-off error on the last digit, but aside from that, 
It looks like we have converged a bit faster. Just look at the third column. Every entry after the 14th row is equal to zero. That is often, but not always, a telltale sign that our summation has converged. This is what I was saying about squaring our answer. It all comes back to our laws of exponents. 1 is equal to the product of 0 0.5 and 2. The answer from the previous screen is underlined in red. Let's make x smaller still and see if our answer converges more quickly. This time we'll use 0 0.1. Why does this work? Well, just look at the term for n equals 4. 1 over 10 to the fourth power is 1 over 10,000. That gives us three more zeros past the decimal place. Each subsequent term gives us even more zeros past the decimal, which does much to speed up convergence. That can be seen in the numbers on this table. Look at the last column. Within rounding, we see 14 digits of accuracy past the decimal by the 10th row. This is about twice as fast as with x equals 1. Very good. So it seems that making the argument x smaller causes the summation to converge more rapidly. Then we can employ laws of exponents to get the number we want. That is shown here. 1 is the product of 0 0.1 and 10. So we have to raise that value to the 10th power to get e. The number underlined in red is what we saw on the previous screen. Before concluding this lesson, I would like to make the connection to the Taylor series. We got the same infinite series by using the binomial expansion. It is reassuring to see that consistency from two different approaches. As shown in the first line, remember that the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. By definition, that scale factor is equal to 1, as discussed elsewhere. Also, any base to the zeroth power equals 1. When we plug that into the Taylor series, we get the polynomial seen in the last line. If you'd like a refresher on the Taylor series, feel free to check out my lesson on that. Otherwise, I will see you again as we continue to explore exponential functions. Thanks for watching.